uh, obviously, it's, it's not a concept that has taken hold here among U.S. policymakers, and I think we'll continue to watch as the Europeans struggle with uh, understanding and debating the concept through their own process. I, I, I won't predict where it will end up uh, in terms of the ultimate outcome of the European regulation. Danny might want to opine on it in his session if he has a different view, but, but it's obviously a, um, a, a very problematic concept to really try to get your arms around and understand the full implications of them, some of which, of course, you presented in your summary of your panel earlier uh, this afternoon. Should we, give them a, should we give them a different bumper sticker? Um, I don't know that we give the Europeans any bumper stickers, but we do try to stay in touch with them. And, and of course, our goal is not so much to change what they're doing, as to ensure that as each of, of these governments, whether it be Europe or Asia or any part of the world, that we are able to see privacy regimes put in place that will be interoperable with what we're trying to do in the United States. So. Um, our model with the Bill of Rights and the Codes of Conduct and FTC enforcement we think is appropriate for the United States. Our goal is to make sure it's interoperable with whatever other countries choose to do as they um, go forward and implement their own regimes. I think we're hopeful, certainly, that if we can demonstrate success with what we're doing, that maybe that serves as a model just along with the more regulatory European model to those nations of the world that are still deliberating is the best way to protect the privacy of their citizens. But if you look at what they're trying to accomplish and what we're trying to accomplish, the end goals are the same. So from that, we need to find a way to be interoperable with each other.